Hi friends, welcome back to week three of our Words on Worship series. I'm Pastor Claire George Drumheller. This is my colleague, Adam Lefevre Hughes. Adam, get us started. Yeah, so we've been following the order of worship. We started out with uh, gathering around the word and then we hear the word. And now we're on to week three where we are responding to the word. And uh, of course we do that in so many different ways. And um, I thought it would be good um, if you could help us a little bit and, and talk about what is a sacrament yeah. and, and how is that a response? What is a sacrament? We have two sacraments in the Protestant church. They are baptism and communion. Mm. And we do them typically as a response to the word. It's one of the ideas that we have heard God's word and one of the ways we respond are with these visible signs mm. of an invisible grace. Communion, of course, is the one we celebrate once a month here at First Presbyterian Church. We do it the first Sunday of the month, except for November. Yes. <laughs> and uh, during Holy Week, we have communion too. And we say it's a way that we, we are nourished at God's table. We actually, we, it's a mystery. We don't exactly understand everything that happens, but somehow or another God's grace is con conveyed to us through the sacrament of communion. Mm. That section of responding on the word also has, sometimes we'll do an affirmation of faith, or we do the prayers of the people. And Adam and I are standing in front of our prayer table in the sanctuary. We've had this table all set up during Lent. And in our nine o'clock service, there's another prayer station that people can use. One of the ways we respond to God's word is by praying for ourselves, praying for the church, and praying for the whole world. Now, Adam, how are music and arts included mm. in that response to the word? Sure, yeah, so somewhere uh, in that part of the service, right, we sometimes we hear a choir anthem or maybe a soloist um, who sings something. And, and usually it's, it's those, those pieces of music are related to the word that we heard. And so, you know, when the whole people are singing, uh, it, it helps us to hear that response to the word. You know, if I'm, if I'm having a particularly tough time or, um, you know, I just kind of drop out singing, I still hear the body of Christ singing that response to the word, which I think is a beautiful thing. Um, and, uh, you know, music, it's, it's ev like everything. It's a gift from God and we return it to God to praise God. And so, um, you know, music, uh, especially, of course, I know a lot about that since I'm the director of music. And so I tend to talk about that. Of course, it's all the arts, but it's, it's this gift and it, and it should be for you know, the building up of, of us, but also we want our music to point still to Christ. And so that response, it, it's a way for us to sort of say to each other, all right, we heard the word now, take this song or this piece of art with you and let it work on you even more. And so um, I, think, I think there's this really great word. Um, it's, it's German, so a little German lesson. It's Gottesdienst. Uh, it, it, it's the German word for divine service or God's service. And it's wonderfully ambiguous where uh, it's not really clear of whether the people are serving God or God is serving the people. And I think that that ambiguity is, is one of those wonderful things, kind of like we don't exactly know what's happening in communion. I think in a way, sometimes we don't even know exactly what's happening in worship, that uh, we, the Spirit and the Lord work in mysterious ways. And so I think it's important to remember that uh, and that there's this image, right, of Jesus kneeling and washing the feet of the disciples. It's, it just turns everything on its head. And so um, rather than responding with like a battle cry, I think, uh, and I wonder, um, if we make that response something, you know, a, a songs or art that effect change in us uh, and, and then encourage us to love and serve our neighbors as Jesus served. And so I, I think there's so much that happens in that at that point in the worship service. Say you. the German word one more time. Gottes Dienst. And it means? Divine service or God's service. Divine service or God's service. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that kind of brings us to, you know, music and arts, the, the kind of, 
the things we see and experience. And um, I wonder if maybe we could say a little bit more about the symbols in worship. Yeah, yeah. we love our symbols in the church. Yeah, we, sure we do. really <laughs> do. And symbols are used all over the place. You know, I think it's easy to think about symbols for our country, for the United mm, States of America. Sure. If you see the American flag or an eagle or the Statue of Liberty, mm. you know, those symbolize pieces of our country and they bring to mind clearly a, what they represent. Mm. And the, those symbols are able to bring in complex layers of meaning that, so that we don't have to use all of our words all of the time. Right. So you see an eagle, you think United States without mm. having to say um, all of the pieces that that eagle stands for. Mm. The same is very true in the church. We have symbols that we use in the church that when you see them, when you hear us talking about them, we want your mind to connect to something in particular. Mm. So we're in front of the prayer table here. Light is in candles are a symbol that we love to use in the church. And of course it reminds us of um, Jesus Christ as the light that shines in the mm. darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. I think probably the best known symbol for Christians is, what would you say? Mm, I'd probably have to say a cross. I think, I, think. I would have to say yeah. a cross yeah. too. <laughs> and it's a fun little history there. I think it's interesting to know that the early Christians would have never dreamed of using a cross mm. as a sign of Jesus or Christianity because it was a form of execution by the state. It was mm. a particularly brutal and public and shameful way to be put to death. But as things do, symbols change and the meaning behind them changes. And so crucifixion was outlawed, Christianity was made legal by the Roman Empire, and Christians really began to embrace the cross as a symbol of God's self-sacrificing love. Mm. We have crosses all over our worship space. They're on our pyramids that hang down from our pulpit and from the lectern and the communion table. Of course, in the sanctuary, we have the beautiful cross that's, that's hung right behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Other symbols that we use in the Christian church, sometimes we'll use doves or flames to represent the Holy Spirit. Um, the symbol of the fish, the ichthus, really was more what the early Christians would have identified as being a Christian. And it reminds us of the feeding of the 5,000. Yeah, I was it just thinking that. Yeah. yeah, and God's abundance and God's grace. And it reminds us, um, there's this fun story where Jesus, after the resurrection, is cooking fish for breakfast on the beach. Oh, yeah. um, and it reminds us that of God's true humanity mm -hmm. and also that death did not have the final hold on Jesus Christ. So I wonder, friends, when you think about symbols um, in worship and in your life of faith, what are they? We would love to hear this. Well, Adam, thanks for joining us again. Yeah. Friends, thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week for our final installment. Yep. Take care. <laughs>